Hi guys. <clears throat> it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the end times. <coughs> it is a Monday morning, <clears throat> March 7th, 2022. And uh, <clears throat> being Monday, I just <coughs> finished my weekly Corona Panic Roundup <coughs> ramp <clears throat> through this. <clears throat> scratchy throat <clears throat> and this cough that I have developed here in the Oasis of Freedom. <clears throat> <clears throat> Damn! <clears throat> anyway, uh, but I wasn't planning to do a Corona Panic uh, rant this morning, but I just couldn't help myself. What I was planning to do this morning was make a comment about that little, uh, did I say it's Monday, March 7th, 2022. So anyway, ugh, last night, right before I went to bed, I I went over there and checked in with that little eco pussy over there at Collapse Chronicles, that little eco pussy named Sam Mitchell. You know that guy, what? Uh, that little eco pussy was doing, he was reading this essay and he managed <clears throat> somehow to keep a straight face. You know, over there, this little limp dick lefty uh, website called Counterpunch. It was, uh, you can go here, you can go over to Collapse Chronicles and find it. He was reading this essay called Stop the War on Livable Ecology by some fellow by the name of Paul Street. Paul Street is one of the major voices over there at, uh, at uh, Counterpunch. Uh, but anyway, if you listen to that thing, what you'll hear, and, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of credit to Sam Mitchell. He, even Sam Mitchell, that little eco pussy, started getting sick and tired of hearing Paul Street. I have no idea if Paul Street is a honky or what he is. I don't know if the guy's white, black, purple, green, or polka dotted. Here comes the airboats. Yes. Gotta love the airboats. I'm really gonna miss these airboats. So anyway, uh, this was, come on, you motherfucker. If you're gonna come through, just come on through, you stupid son of a bitch. You clueless fucking moron. You goddamn honky. You fucking planet-eating, clueless fucking moron honky. Goddamn honkies like that motherfucker that the planet's in the shape that it's in. Have you ever seen, uh, actually the, uh, come to think of it, the, uh, th the only airboat ride I took, I was sitting right uh, behind a, a black person. But anyway, enough about, uh, enough about airboats. So anyway, you know, like, like, so many good little limp dick lefties, you know, talking about how capitalism uh, is, is, is taking down the planet and just kind of implying that uh, communism or socialism or whatever ism uh, would be any different. But even beyond that was how many goddamn times this dude, Paul Street, brought up the subject of Whitey. That it is all Honky's fault. That 100% of the collapse of a planet is directly due to Whitey. Apparently, if Honky's had never evolved, we would be living, it would be a, a just uh, colorful rainbow uh, of different skin tones, living in balance and harmony with the planet that if you are not white, you are a victim. 
you are not a participant you are a victim i would be a little bit pissed off if if, if i weren't a honky how many times this little fucking limp dick lefty you know talking and using the word victim to describe anybody who does not have a white skin over and over how many times does he use the word victim in here <clears throat> the non-white victims, the honky whatever we are, what's the opposite of victim? It is all honky's fault. I don't know. I, I got to the time he, to the 15th mention of white people in, in this before I, uh, before uh, I, I stopped counting. I'm going to read you a, just a couple of passages. I think I might have like four passages out of this essay. All right. <clears throat> the worst initial effects, you know, of climate change are being suffered in the mostly non-white global south of the world capitalist periphery but the rolling climate calamity will ultimately claim blue-eyed Swedes and Canadian truckers along with the rest of the species. There is no planet B, white folks of the north. Yes, there is no planet B for the white folks of the north. Okay, let's see. Uh, I really like this. is a long, long uh, article. Uh, I really like this one, and I'm going to come back to this in a minute. But I'm going to I'm going to finish out these passages. But we're going to come back to this passage. <clears throat> Meanwhile white-skinned North American frackers, white-skinned North American frackers have been having a nice week licking their planet cooking chops over rising demand for their lethal black fuel resulting from anticipated disruptions in Russian oil and gas supplies. Yes, those white-skinned North American frackers. Uh, you are not allowed to be a fracker if you don't have white skin, apparently. Uh, that is the message here, that all frackers are whitey. All right, then he really uh, he's building up... <clears throat> Let's see, under his chapter lit, White Empathy and Worthy, White Empathy and Worthy versus Unworthy Victims. Yes. Yes, whiteness, whiteness, that powerful drug that contributes so strongly to Western fossil capitalist and fossil fascist climate denial by reassuring Europeans and North Americans that they don't need to get all crazy about climate change because global warming's nastiest initial impacts fall first on the majority non-white global periphery. This even while the white majority core states are the main generation of the climate plague. Yes, I love it. Whiteness, that powerful drug known as being born white. Yes, we are, if you are born white, you are born a drug addict. You are uh, addicted to whiteness. <clears throat> and then, of course, he closes with a passage from uh, a fellow named Andreas Malm. 
Don't know whether Andreas, probably kind of lightly brown-skinned. He is probably Hispanic from his book, White Skin, Black Fuel on the Danger of Fossil Fascism. So anyway, it, it, it's even that little eco-pussy Sam Mitchell was pointing out uh, yesterday, okay, obviously what Paul Street is saying, that if you are white, you are guilty. Okay, if you are white, you are guilty. If you are any color but white, you are a victim of honky and uh, the collapse of a planet. That there is no way anybody who is not a honky is participating in capitalism. Capitalism is a white man's game. And, 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 and again, it wasn't so much, uh, but also there was the white male uh, angle too. You know, it's white men you know, are the main planet eaters, I guess followed by white women. It's a little unclear whether whether non-white men are bigger planet eaters than white women. That way he never really tried to find out that if you have a penis and your skin is not white, but you have a dick, whether you are a bigger planet eater than a white person who does not have a dick. So I'm thinking that non-white men and white women are probably, to coin a phrase, in a gray area. There might be a little bit of overlap. But certainly, certainly, if you don't have a white skin and you don't have a dick, Give yourself a pass. Just take a pass, uh, that billionaire Oprah Winfrey with your fucking mansions all over the fucking uh, country and probably the planet flying around in your, in your goddamn private jet. Uh, I'm sure uh, Beyonce, uh, yes, I'm sure Beyonce uh, has nothing to do with capitalism. I'm sure Beyonce's uh, environmental footprint is about the size of Sancho Panza's Paul. Okay. You know, th th this whole thing, heaping all of this uh, environmental guilt on Honky, and make no mistake about it, Okay, even Sam Mitchell understands that that fucking honkies, uh, by and large, have an outsized ecological footprint. This is no shit Sherlock. Uh, that honkies uh, environmental footprint, that some, that some blue-eyed Swede uh, has a bigger environmental footprint and probably a smaller dick uh, than, you know, than some uh, dude living in a mud hut in fucking Somalia. All right? No fucking shit, Sherlock. But, uh, you know, this kind of, this, this whole uh, heaping all of this environmental guilt uh, on, on honky, you know, with the implication that, uh, that non-honkies uh, have, have no environmental footprint, uh, it, it, it's just kind of like a, what is it, the twin sister uh, of the myth of the noble savage that, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're a noble savage, this is particularly, you know, the red people over here in this country and, and the, you know, the really little dark brown ones down there in, in, uh, in Brazil, you know, in the Amazon jungle uh, or wherever. You know, Manga Bay was pointing out uh, this week, as I have been pointing out, uh, for years that more and more of these indigenous people are choosing 
uh, particularly as the younger, what I call the smartphone generation comes along, that more and more uh, of these indigenous people are choosing the baubles of uh, global industrial civilization over uh, their, you know, their their ancestral lands or whatever. That that if you're a fucking fourteen year old noble savage down there in Brazil, and 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 and, and you hear about uh, all of these honkies up there, uh, you know, uh, being born with a fucking smartphone in your hand, uh, you're gonna want that fucking smartphone. And if you have to make a choice between a smartphone and some ancestral fishing <clears throat> ground, you are going to choose the fucking ancestral fishing ground every fucking time. And with every passing day, uh, more and more... Uh, of these indigenous people, these noble savages. It's a fucking insult. You know, when I read this noble savage crowd, it is a fucking insult. It's treating these people, you know, these Amazon Indians, like they're some sort of subhuman. Uh, people are fucking people. But anyway... I really liked that uh, that thing about the white-skinned frackers. So I go on Google and I ask the question, are there any black frackers? <laughs> are there any black frackers? And Google said, did you mean <laughs> are there any black crackers? <laughs> are there any black crackers? There are actually a few black crackers. If, if you know, uh, if you're familiar with Charlie Pride, with the music of Charlie Pride, you, there really are some black crackers. They're the, the Carolina Chocolate Drops. Uh, the music group, the Carolina Chocolate Drops. Uh, if you want to see some black crackers, so then I changed the question to, are all frackers white? <coughs> and of course, Google, did you mean to say, are all crackers white? Anyway, that, that could be a whole nother hilarious rant. Are all crackers white? Ah, God damn it. And I, I, uh, I, I can't, now the, now the fucking computer has eaten this. And so then what I googled, motherfucker, I'm not starting this rant over, uh, I, I, I googled, are there any black oil and gas executives? And uh, page unresponsive. Gee, no shit, Sherlock. Oh, here we go. Okay. Are there any black oil and gas uh, executive? Uh, and this is what I heard. Prior to this year, this is a pretty new, ar new article. Prior to this year, the U.S. was energy dependent in 2019 for the first time since 1957. It marked the first time in 62 years that U.S. energy production was higher than its consumption. Many factors contributed to this, mainly the energy sector, oil and natural gas industry, use of techniques like hydraulic fracturing and horizontal drilling, more commonly known as fracking. During this period, several major black-owned oil and natural gas firms benefited economically from the increase in U.S. energy production. There are several well-established and successful black-owned energy companies. 
Some of the best known include Ace Petroleum and others. So then what they do is they go down the list and uh, and, and talk about uh, a, a, you know a bunch of these black oil and, and gas executives. I know I noticed that a, a lot of them uh, are Nigerian. Uh, you know, obviously uh, Nigerian oil companies. So I guess according to Paul Street, these black-skinned frackers are not licking their chops, their planet cooking chops. Only the white-skinned frackers from, uh, from here to Nigeria. Uh, and then it got a little unclear. So I right, clearly, we understand the difference between black and white. But then we have this gray area, or should I say, more of a brown and yellow area. I, you know, I, I'm wondering, are Arabs and Oriental people honkies or not? So uh, I asked the question, you know, are Arab people Caucasian? And the jury is out. Half the people call Arabs honkies and half the people seem to call Arabs non-honky. So I don't know uh, about all of those uh, planet-eating Arab sheiks or not. Are they honkies or not? Uh, and then, of course, we get into China. Uh, I don't think that Orientals are Caucasians. No mention, Paul Street never makes any mention of, uh, of uh, the, uh, obviously, the five biggest Chinese oil uh, companies. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Takeaways from this, China is home to many large oil and gas companies, most of which are state-owned. Sinopec is one of the largest oil companies in the world and, in fact, ranks number one in terms of revenue. In terms of revenue, it is the... Chinese oil companies, the single biggest uh, planet cooker on the planet. Sinopec, uh, I'm sorry, China National Petroleum includes PetroChina, which is an oil and gas subsidiary with shares listed on New York Stock Exchange. CNOC and Sinochem are also among the largest oil producers in China. And then they break all of this down about the Chinese oil companies. But according to Paul Street, I guess, since uh, they are not honky, uh, they're doing nothing to kill the planet. I, I wonder, I would like to find out how many airboat owners <coughs> are honkies, or white men. My guess is, I'm gonna guess that 99.8% of airboat owners are male honkies, probably with little dicks. Uh, it, it is my guess. Uh, so they just strap that airboat between their legs and head off into the planet. But speaking of uh, heading off into the planet, the little dog says, I need to head off and get some squirrelies. Is my little dog a honky? I can't tell. He's, he's blonde. You are a honky. Looking at your little pecker. I call uh, that little pecker a honky pecker. It's it's both pale skinned and little. 
and uh, blonde hair. Yes, you little planet-eating squirrel killing assassin. You ready to get some squirrelies? To assassinate some squirrelies? Get out there and enjoy your white skin while you still can. Maybe you want to go out and buy a fucking airboat. You clueless fucking planet eating honky. Bye guys.